What is going on guys, it's your boy Edward V and today we're going to talk about something special. How much body fat can you realistically lose in one week? Now setting aside diet and protocols, let's just look at the science behind actually losing weight and what is the realistic amount that can actually be burned. There aren't any videos out there that talk about this, so I'm going to go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. Okay, so one thing that people care about the most is speed. People want to lose weight quickly. Although if you lose weight too drastically and too fast, it could actually work against you in the long term. So you don't want to lose weight insanely fast. Now, one thing that needs to be understood is that body fat and weight are not the same thing. And although it has been proposed that 3,500 calories of weight can be reduced if one takes off, for example, 500 calories per day for an entire week, which would add up to 3,500 calories in a deficit that you would lose one pound. But although that may be around the number of calories that it would take to create one pound of body fat, that does not necessarily mean that your body type will lose 3,500 calories in body fat alone. Now, before I dive into looking at how much body fat you can actually lose realistically in one week, let's talk about body fat itself. What is body fat? Body fat is an incredibly simplified term because the thing is fat cells store fat so there's so many different mechanisms to body fat being stored in your body and believe it or not fat cells they can never actually go away from the moment that you're born to about 25 years old you will be producing and creating new fat cells in your body at around 25 years old you will cease to create any more fat cells but you will also never be able to remove any fat cells now you might be confused by this notion you might say wait a second why would i have fat cells what if i lose weight my fat cells should go away fat cells never go away even if you are skin and bones even if you are 0% body fat and your skin is right up against all of your musculature, you will still have the exact amount of fat cells that you created up until the age of 25. Now, this is why it's pretty important that parents control what someone eats from a young age because they can develop more and more fat cells than someone else. For example, if there are two people with the same exact body composition, let's say they have the exact same body composition frame by frame it does it it is exact one can have drastically less body fat cells than the other person but they have the same amount of body fat inside of them because the cells expand to put the triglycerides inside of it now if it expands and it will expand and keep you at the same weight what does it matter how many fat cells you have in your body which is probably what you're thinking right now the thing is the more fat cells that you have in your body and the more fat cells that you have that have actually shrunk the more signals it sends out to say hey you need to fill us up and then that creates those hormonal imbalances where leptin is decreased ghrelin is increased certain triggers happen to make you hungry to make you eat more to make you feel less full so that you can add more of the triglycerides more of those body fat into your body so it can be stored in your fat cells the thing with fat cells is people absolutely hate them and people don't want them but they are absolutely necessary and the reason i say this is because i know that someone in the comment section will write well the best thing to do to burn the most fat is just fast for all seven days just fast straight through there's no better way than fasting straight through for all seven days the problem is body fat is a useful tool in the body it helps insulate the body and it actually helps regulate body temperature so you need body fat you actually need it you don't want too much of it too much body fat too much visceral fat is very dangerous for you but you do need a certain amount of body fat. So it's a useful tool the same way muscle is a useful tool. And the body is very intelligent and it will not allow for you to just burn straight through your body fat for seven days. Gluconeogenesis will take place, which can happen with your body fat, but it can also happen with amino acids 
that come from the muscle tissue. So it will look towards your muscle tissue, break it down, look at the amino acids, break that down and turn that into glucose. And this process starts to happen after about 48 to 72 hours of just being in a fast. Yes, you are going to lose body fat, but you're also going to lose muscle as your body tries to do a tightrope and juggling act to keep as much body fat as it can and keep as much muscle as it can. So simply fasting straight through is not the most effective thing, believe it or not. Well, now somebody might say, well, no, there's no way because when I simply fasted all the way through, I looked at the scale and I lost a lot of weight. Yes, because weight loss doesn't necessarily mean fat loss. The reason I explained all of this is because I want you to understand the importance of what that means. Because you might feel incredibly good by seeing all this weight coming off and even the study that I'm going to reference is going to talk about weight, but you still have to understand the nuance of losing fat versus just losing weight. The quickest thing that you can lose is water weight. Glycogen is stored as mostly water in your body and that gets broken down within the first eight hours of not eating. That breakdown and washout effect will show itself on the scale. Don't get me wrong, breaking down glycogen and releasing water will actually also make you look leaner because it's moving your skin closer to your actual muscle tissue. So you will look leaner by losing glycogen and losing water, but that does not mean that you have lost body fat. Now let's get to how much body fat you can actually lose per week. Before I even break everything down, I'll give you the number. A review of about 35 studies from 1995 to 2009 averaged about one to two pounds of weight loss per week. So there you go, there's the number. But this is an average and it was broken down into many different body categories. They looked at age, they looked at the initial starting weight, they looked at the prescribed energy deficit, the study length, and frequency of dietary counseling. And all of these things changed the statistics and the numbers to a certain degree. And although you probably think that being younger meant you lost more weight, that wasn't true. Being older meant that you lost more weight. So the most optimal group that lost the most weight would be a group that's put on a 1000 calorie deficit per day, age 55. And the participants aged 55 showed the most amount of weight loss per week. And weight had a determining factor as well. And a normal 45 year old, if they were 187 pounds, they were losing an average of 0.93 pounds per week. If they were 198 pounds, they were looking at an average of one pound per week. If they were 209 pounds, they were looking at an average weight loss of 1.2 pounds per week. If they were 220 pounds, they were looking at an average weight loss of 1.3 pounds per week. And if they were 231 pounds, they were looking at an average weight loss of 1.41 pounds per week. And that was much less if they were 35 and even less if they were 25 and higher if they were 55. Remember, the fat cells that you will have in your body lock in at around 25 years old. So the signaling that your cells are gonna do asking for you to replenish energy does not change just because you're 35 or 45 or 55. So just keep that in mind. And these are people who are doing deficits of 500 calories up to 1000 calories per day deficits. So that means if they're doing 1000 calories, that's a 7,000 calorie deficit for the week. If one pound of body fat is only 3,500 calories, then they should be losing at least two pounds. But the results varied across the board based on all of these different biological situations. There isn't going to ever be a one for one number. It's always gonna be determined by things like your initial body weight, by things like your age. The study actually saw that men and women had no difference. There were no significant difference between men and women groups in terms of losing weight. The link to the study will be down in the description below. And of course, I want to thank my patrons for my Patreon. And I'm going to go ahead and put their names right up.